I'm basically going to talk about art and visual culture. When we think of art, what comes to your mind? You know, maybe I'm sure you visited some art galleries, some museums uh, where some kind of art is there. Art can be contemporary art, modern art, which is which you find it in, in the galleries, or it can be traditional art, it can be you know, folk art. There are so many kinds of art. Uh, which form in this uh, conventional definition of art. Um, so, uh, most of us think that art resides in, in art galleries or it is something that we put up in our houses, on the walls, some kind of framed picture, it could be photography, it could be painting, it could be sculpture, any, any of those forms which, which uh, are defined as a conventional form of art. Uh, and there are folk arts, you know, in the villages, in the tribal areas, there are specific art forms that you get to see. Uh, but I'm going to talk about something which is probably not even defined as art. Um, there are lots of things, there are lots of objects, there are lots of forms of art which we see every day, but we hardly uh, define them as art, we hardly take them seriously as art. Um, in fact, the art critics, the art historians have only very recently started uh, looking at this. I'm, I'm talking about something which I call popular visual culture or popular art. Popular art is, uh, I'm going to show you a lot of examples of that. Um, it is something that, uh, of course, art is, is something that is made by an artist, uh, either painting or a sculpture or whatever uh, and it is exclusive, it is like one piece of art which is being made by somebody and it goes and it makes somebody's house, it's there on the wall or it's in the, there in the gallery. So usually we assume that an artist creates one single piece of art and that is you know one exclusive piece which is used by somebody. But then there are also art forms which are replicated or duplicated several times. Uh, and they form a part of the mass mass culture. So I'm talking about the mass produced or mass duplicated art. It, it, it needn't be just a two-dimensional, you know, visual art like a painting or a, uh, or a photo photograph. It could be an ephemera. When I say ephemera, it could be an object. It could be a three-dimensional object. It could be just you know anything drawn on a street or, or anywhere. So. Uh, People have started taking seriously even that kind of art. Uh, so, popular art is something I would define it in two ways. One is that it, it is mass produced, and the other it is that it is it has a social life. It has a life of its own. So people interact with it every day, um, uh, and, and a lot of people, not just one person. Like if you, if you buy a painting, you put it in your house. Only you appreciate it or your guests appreciate it. But mass produced art or, or popular art is something that is appreciated by a whole lot of people. You know. It's like a, um, you know, a lot of people buy it, a lot of people watch it every day. So, what I'm talking about is actually something like the posters, um, the posters, the calendars, the advertisements, the, all these. Uh, very beautiful, very uh, popular kind of art forms which we see every day on the street and we just pass by, you know. Uh, we don't really consider it very seriously uh, as if it's something to be taken, uh, you know, as an, an art form. We just assume that it's something that a certain class of people buy and put in their homes to, uh, to uh, maybe decorate their house with, I mean, you find lots of houses, uh, mostly in rural areas, where people actually uh, use this kind of poster art in their homes as, a, as something like a wallpaper. They just plaster the entire wall with these kind of posters. Um, now, there is an entire industry which produces this kind of art. There is an entire industry of printing presses which are actually making these posters. They are commissioning to the artists to produce art in this kind of form. And then uh, 
and then they are uh, sold at a very nominal, very very cheap price. Like you could probably find a poster uh, for ten rupees or twenty rupees, fifty rupees at the most, because it caters for certain class of people, and, and, and these people uh, buy it in their home. So it has to be cheap. It has to be produced. It has its own aesthetic values. It has its own uh, kind of artistic values. There are, uh, and of course, because it's catering to a certain class of people, it has to uh, cater to their aspirations, to their dreams. You know, these are people who are living in really very poor conditions, and so they are they, they can't really afford to go to places. They can't afford to own things. So uh, this kind of art is actually portraying their dreams. You know? So, so you have things like uh, these Swiss, Swiss kind of landscape, or uh, motorcycles, or, or, or racing cars, or, or some kind of a foreign locale. Uh, then you have film actors and actresses. You have these uh, body builders. You have babies. All kinds of things uh, that you can think of. It kind of creates an entire uh, microcosm of the imagination of people. You know, how people think. How people dream about their lives, you know, what they want, to do, what they aspire to do in their lives. So much of this art actually is, is kind of portraying that dream of people. Uh, some of it, uh, for example, it, it's even showing something like the rural India, you know, rural Rajasthan and so on. So it's not uh, this kind of art is not catered only to the rural people. It's also catering to the people who come from the villages. They are living in the city. You know, they are migrants, so they are living in really uh, small kind of houses, and they dream of what their uh, rural house was. So in a way, it's a combination of the urban dream and the and the, and the what they left behind in their homes, in their, in their villages. So there are a lot of things happening. There are also Western, you know, European kind of images. There are of course religious images. You know, a lar large uh, number of this art. You know, of religious images. I'm going to show you some examples of that. Um, so, what is the purpose of, of this art, these posters and calendars? They, they use it for decoration and purification, they use it for religious uh, devotion, there are advertisements, uh, there could be propaganda, there are political causes, there are movements. And then uh, uh, also a reproduction of the new art. You know, a lot of uh, paintings which are being done for people, and then they are being reproduced and sold. Then of course there is the educational com component of some of the poster art. There is a lot of political use of these, this art. You, you may have seen on the streets every day how the political parties, how the political movements. Uh, use the walls, how they make the graffiti on the walls, so all that, the graffiti, the, the advertisement, the billboards or hoardings, what you call them, they are all part of what I call the popular art. Uh, and, and this is what is something that was not really taken seriously by scholars or art critics or art historians uh, till now. But only recently people have started taking it seriously because there are some people who started collecting this kind of art. I mean, so far, where would you find this kind of art? You won't find it in museums or libraries or art galleries. Nobody was really keeping this. So it was, uh, when I use the word ephemera, ephemera is also a kind of an uh, object which is there.